Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson, we'll be covering our last lesson on area and perimeter, but we're going to be dealing specifically with area in this lesson, where we're looking at area of the shaded region of shapes. Okay. So basically, this is a typical example of what you can expect to get. As you can see here, we have um, what we'd usually get is two shapes, right? One shape on the inside of another one, okay? And then usually what they designate is the shaded area over here. So you can see that shaded area is actually what we need to be working out. And the way that we do this is first, what we need to do is work out area of the main shape, okay? So the main shape is obviously going to be the one that has the other shape on the inside of it because ultimately we need this area to find out the area of the shaded space. And the reason and the reason why that is, is because we need to then once we've worked out the area of the main shape, work out the area of the we can call it secondary shape, we can call it other shape. I'm just going to put it as other shape. And that can be any shape. In this case, they've given us, uh, there's no dimensions or anything or lengths, but it's a square inside a square, okay? So, work out the area of the other shape, and then what you're going to do is take the area of the first shape, and then you're going to minus the area of the other shape. You can see I've color coordinated so you know which shape I'm talking about, okay? And that will equal the shaded area. Okay? So just to explain how that works, this main shape that we worked out, this is it, okay? Its area is all of this, right? But what they want us to work out is with the addition of this new shape that takes up part of this area, the shaded area is basically what's left over. Okay? So because the shaded area is what's left over, all we need to do is minus the area that that inside shape takes up in the big shape. So we can find out the remaining area and that will be our shaded area. So I'm pretty sure that does make sense. I hope I've explained that down very basically. So what we're doing is working out the area of a main shape, working out the area of the other shape, and then we're minusing the two to find out the shaded area because that's the area that is left over. Moving on, we're going to actually do some calculations now. So what they'd ask you typically in this case is to work out the shaded area or the size of the shaded area or the area of the shaded space or region okay so first thing we need to do is they will say sometimes they'll say but um, in this case these are both going to be squares okay so they're both squares we'll just put that there quickly And so what we know about squares is all the sides are the same length, okay? So therefore we know that this is going to be 8 over here, 8 over here, and 8 over here. And we also know that this on the inside is going to be 5 over here, 5 over here, 5 over here. So let's work out, firstly, as we know, the area of our main shape. And our main shape is this one on the outside, right? So we'll say area is equal to side squared, right? Because we're dealing with a square. So we'll say 8 squared, which will give me a final answer of 64 as my final answer. There is no units. So because they haven't given us units like centimeters or anything, we'll write it as units. Sorry. Units squared. Okay. So we just generalize by saying units squared. Okay. If there's no centimeters or millimeters given to us. So that's all we do, we generalize. Now we're going to work out the area of our inside shape, okay? So that's going to be area is equal to, sorry, 
I'm going to work with color coordination just so you guys can differentiate. So area is equal to side squared. So we get 5 squared here. And our final answer is 25 units squared. Okay, so now we've worked out the size of the main shape, the area, which would be this whole area here. And then we worked out the side of, size of the inside shape, which would be this area over here. So obviously to find out the shaded area which is around it, we'd have to minus the inside shape from the main shape, okay? So the area is going to be equal to 64 units minus 25 units. That's unit squared. So our final area is going to be equal to 39 units squared and that will be the shaded area okay so we've worked out the area of the shaded region and that will be our final answer for this example moving on we can see here now in this case we've been given a rectangle and a triangle okay so let's look at the survey here we need to try and figure out different lengths here because we haven't really been given information straight to us. So first thing that I want to look at is the fact that from this point of from this point of here to this point, they've told us that it is two centimeters, right? But they've also told us that this space over here is also equal to this space over here and equal to this space over here. So that means that this is going to be two centimeters as well. And this is going to be 2 centimeters this side as well. So that gives us a total base of 6 centimeters, okay? Then we need to try and find the height of the triangle as well. So we know that from this point to this point, the height of this rectangle gives us that this to here is 4 centimeters. And they give us that this to here is 1 centimeter. So we know that the total height is 5 centimeters of the triangle. So we, therefore we can work out the the area of the main shape first, okay? Because now remember, the shaded area is what's left over after you take away the rectangle's area, right? So, let's do this. Um, so, we're going to work out area is half base times height. Once again, I'm using the colors to show you. The triangle's blue, so I'm doing the area in blue here. So, area is equal to half base times height. So half, the base we found to be 6, the height, 5. Cool. So 6 times 5 is going to give me 30. 30 times a half is going to give me 15 centimeters squared. So they gave us centimeters here, so we can just put centimeters squared, right? Now what we need to do is work out the area of the rectangle. So... Area is going to be equal to length times breadth. So we know our length here is 4 centimeters times 2 centimeters, right? Which will give us a final answer of 8 centimeters squared. So now that we've done this, we know we can work out the area of the shaded space. So the area is going to be equal to 15 centimeters squared minus 8 centimeters squared. And this will give us a final answer of 7 centimeters squared for the shaded area. Okay. So, as you can see, there is really no big challenge to working out these different examples. The only thing we really need to do is follow the steps given. We need to work out the size of the main shape, the area, I mean, of the main shape, the area of the shape inside, minus the 2, and we get that shaded area which is around. Okay. Okay, so moving on to this example, what we can see here is that we are given a square and a circle, okay? So our circle is very nicely in the center of the square and the area around it is all shaded. So we're going to work out, as we know, area of the main shape. So that's going to be side squared. So we get 10 squared, which gives me 
100 units squared. Then we can do our circle. So we know that for the area of a circle, let me just get the different color. Our area is going to be equal to pi r squared. And they've given us the radius there as well. So it's going to be pi 2 squared, okay? So our answer here is going to be 4 pi, right? And that's going to be units squared. So now all we need to do is just work out that shaded area. And as we know, we're just going to do basic minusing. So it's going to be 100 units minus 4 pi units squared. So it is about in squared. And that is going to be our final answer. Because remember, with circles, we have to answer in terms of pi, right? And we can't really minus these two from each other because there's no defined value of the 4 pi units squared. So as you can see, that is basically going to be the end of the lesson. This specific part or topic isn't that hard really to understand or grasp the concept. I've done fairly diverse um, examples using different types of shapes. So that's just going to be it for today. Just to recap quickly, the first step always is going to be working out the area of the main shape, right? And then secondly, then secondly working out the area of this other shape. Cool. Once you've done that, you can find out the area of the shaded region. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope that this lesson was very informative and you took something away from it.